Hey guys, it's Andy Jeff, and today we are building a DIY hydroponic tower, and this is a part one in our little series that we're going to be doing on this. I am essentially today going to be building the base, and then that's the hard part. After that, we'll have another video that will come out, and we'll do the water lines and that kind of thing. But today, we're just building the base, so follow along. I'll show you exactly how it's done, step by step. All right, some of the things that you're going to need, the nut cup you're going to be using. You need to know what size hole you're going to need to make. Here, this three inch pipe's a little too big. This is a little small. We're gonna start with a two inch pipe. These are literally just used to push holes into our frame body, but we'll get to that. Then we're gonna need a heat gun, level, some kind of marker, sawzall. We've got three caps. We've also got four 90s. We've got four regular tees and then one sand tee. And the only reason we have a sand tee here is because unfortunately our hardware store did not have an extra regular tee because if you're buying all this stuff, they all should just be regular tees. So five regular tees. And then we've got two 10 foot lengths of four inch uh, sewer and drain pipe. It's ASTM 2729. You can pick it up at most hardware stores. It's used for French drains, that kind of thing. We also could use SDR 35. Uh, the SDR stuff, it's the exact same. It's just you know, a uh, teal color, but make sure when you're buying your fittings, they are all the SDR fittings because otherwise a normal, because a normal schedule 40 fitting is not going to fit this type of pipe. And we want this thing to be lightweight yet durable. Also make sure you buy some glue and cleaner and you have a tape measure because you're going to need all of these things to build this frame. We're going to be using the bottom of the frame as essentially the reservoir as well, which is going to be super cool. And that's why this is laid out in this particular way. You could ignore the toy in the background. My stepdaughter, you know, got to have, got to have play stuff for the kids as long as well as for the adults, but let's get to it. So what we're going to do, you guys are going to be spending a lot of time up on a tripod today, kind of just looking down as I'm building this. And I'll go over exactly how I'm going to put this thing together, at least in my mind, how it's going to work. It's also worth mentioning that I bought some half inch regular PVC and a half inch coupling and a half inch male adapter. And you'll see what these are for later, but just know that I bought these. It is not a requirement. I'm going to use these to essentially make a float to be able to tell how much water is in the hydroponic garden. Okay, so for the first part of the project is we kind of have to get our runs cut out. And in order to do that, we need a marker, tape measure, and a sawzall. Essentially what we are going to do is cut one foot sections, but since this is belled, we're only gonna cut up to eight sections and you'll see why later. So what you're gonna do is take your tape, lay it out, take your marker, and we're just gonna mark every foot. There we have it. Now we just have to cut our one foot lines with our sawzall. I'm gonna go off the edge here so that the waste goes into the grass because otherwise my girlfriend would probably murder me. It helps a lot that I am left-handed for this, but you can always find a place to cut that will be comfortable for you. So when you're using a sawzall to cut PVC pipe, we wanna just try to make it as straight as possible. So make sure you concentrate while you're doing this. And basically this is just gonna be a speed montage of me cutting all eight pieces. Are you ready? I just wanna point out factory edge. Not really, but it's not that bad. I've definitely cut worse. Now that you've got your eight pieces, make sure you run your fingers around them. Clean off all the burrs because we don't want those to be in the way when we are gluing. All right, this is just dry foot, so obviously it's not glued. But do you see where I'm going with this? This is in my mind right now. You might be thinking, oh, but Jeff, you're missing two pieces. That's right. That's because you can't cut all 10 feet off of that because you're going to have to use this as a coupling. So go grab your other 10 footer and go grab two feet off of that, two one foot pieces, cut them out. Okay, so this is essentially what we're doing. I had no idea how large this was gonna end up being, 
in my mind. So we're going to go, looks like it's about, oh, 39 and a half inches. And that should be square. So by 40, because of the sanity, I would assume. And that's not set up and they don't have complete glue joints and everything yet. So basically, if you have a 40 by 40 spot, it will set into it. And that's what I needed to know for the inside of the house. And yes, I said inside of the house because it's fall here in Iowa and we can't have it outside because things will freeze. I'm trying to grow some crops during winter with this bad boy. So you might also be wondering what is gonna be the capacity of this system. And I'm actually gonna build it up in a way that it'll have a little bit more than this. But according to the internet, each foot of the SDR should hold 0.65 gallons. So having 10 feet of this should allow us to have six and a half gallons without the extra little towers I'm gonna to put on it for a reservoir. Now comes the fun part. We're gonna pull this back apart and then we are going to glue it. Now essentially, if you've never glued anything before, I'm gonna show you how using the PVC glue. So now essentially we are going to glue this. So for this part, you're gonna need your primer and your glue, and then you're gonna need a level in order to put this together. Now, like I said, this is all dry fitted. I just wanted to see about how big it was gonna be. So go ahead and pull your pieces off. And we're gonna start with these three cross sections here. Now you might be wondering why would we start with those three cross sections? Meaning the T's, the ones that have the T's that are sticking vertically up in the air. And that's because when we glue these together, we don't have to worry about level or anything like that. So pull these three apart. And now I'm gonna give you a demonstration on how to glue stuff. Okay, so gluing stuff with PVC glue is a two-part system. It is cleaner, which is clear. We don't use purple primer around these parts, all right? And then heavy-duty cement. Sometimes you gotta use some pliers to get these open. I've already done that. Open both up. And what we're gonna do here, I'll take a seat. We're going to just glue these pipes in here. We don't have to worry about level or anything right now, but something to mention, this, it's very flexible. So if you can't get it to go into the joint, you can bend it a little bit. Step one, you always start on your hub, which is the actual fitting, and then do the pipe second. So we're going to use the cleaner first. I bought two different, two different cements. Isn't that great? Well, hopefully I got an old can of cleaner around here. We love a good yard primer. This has been sitting in the yard since I made the hydroponic garden in the backyard, which yes, if you've never been on this channel, I have a hydroponic garden in the backyard. Uh, I didn't do a build video on it, but I did lots of update videos and how quick things grew because it's just a giant experiment to me because I've never done it before. But uh, thankfully we have a primer. So primer and heavy duty cement. Mistakes happen, and you know what? I'm not gonna edit that out because sometimes it's worth knowing that other people make mistakes. So let's go ahead and get to this. But first I'm gonna put my hair up so I don't get junk all in it. Okay, now we're back. So unscrew your primer. Let's see how much water's in this bad boy. Oh, it doesn't look bad. Still smells all right. Don't huff that, that's bad for you. Okay, like I was saying, we're gonna do the hub first. So ignore this part, we're just gluing the pipes in these right here. So hub, then pipe. Take your primer. Run it around on the inside there, get everything nice and coated. Do the same thing to your pipe. This essentially kind of melts the pipe down and gets it ready for actually like PVC welding. This welds plastic basically together. Then we take our heavy duty glue. I like the heavy duty because it doesn't run, doesn't drip as much. And you put some on the inside there, just like that. And then do the same thing to the outside of the pipe. Then put the two 
together. Like I said, you might have to bend it. And once you get it all the way seated, go ahead and twist. You want to twist it right away, but twist it a quarter of a turn. That takes out any air bubbles and creates a completely watertight seal. Now that you know how to glue stuff, I'm not going to walk through each and individual one. I'm just going to show you what I'm gluing and then do it. And I'm spinning mine so the letters are down because I told my girlfriend she could have fair rain at painting this when it's finished. Next, I'm doing the middle one, exact same way, and then I will do the far one, the exact same way. Then we'll get to the actual parallel sides of everything and making sure everything's level after that. Okay. So now we've got our three runs that are going to be glued together. Now we're on to the other ones. Now when we glue these, we want these completely all the way down. So what we're going to do is we're going to glue this pipe to this 90, this pipe to this 90, and then do the same thing over here. And then we'll worry about the level after that. Okay, so like I said, with this, we don't have to worry about level yet. So we're going to get our 90s. And just go ahead and glue one pipe in each 90. Once again, if you've never glued anything before, it's the exact same process. Whether it's a T or a 90, fitting first with primer, then the pipe with primer, then the fitting with glue, and the pipe with glue. Then twist. And there we have it. Lather, rinse, repeat. Okay, I've got these laid in a way that they are going to go, but when we when we glue stuff now, we're going to want to make sure the hubs are facing on a perfectly flat surface. That's why this piece of concrete on this porch works great. This piece does not because there's a crack that runs down it. So we're going to glue right here and then I'm going to move the next one over and glue it this way. We want all of the hubs facing in the same direction. So once again, we're going to do the hub. Going to do the pipe with primer, then do it with glue, and you're going to have to move fairly quickly on this because we want to be able to manipulate the pipe in the way that it needs to in order to sit flat and use the concrete to set everything flat, just like that. Now we're going to do the exact same thing to this pipe, put it in here, make sure it's all flat just like this. And if you watch that close enough there, you would see that I struggled and had to move quickly to make sure that everything will sit flat. Sometimes you just got to get a little glue on your fingers. Nothing wrong with that. All right, we're going to do the exact same thing again. The exact same way. Now let's add our last piece. You can see this one's extremely eggshell, egg-shaped, so that's going to be fun, but just be prepared for it that you're going to have to manipulate the pipe because this stuff, it doesn't like to hold its shape that well. And that's okay because that makes it ultra lightweight, which is really what we're going for on this. We want it to be ultra lightweight so that you can move it around. I'm going to move this from inside the house. And in spring, it's going to go on the outside of the house so it can get some natural sunlight. All right, like I said, going to have to manipulate this. Actually, it went in. Wow. Make sure you have enough glue on there that you can push everything down. Now we have our two runs of the base created. And now it's really kind of just putting stuff together, but we got to check level on this next part. Okay, so on this portion, level matters. 
you've never leveled anything in your life, I'm gonna bring you down here and give you a quick tutorial on how it works. We want all of these completely level. So when we put it into our hubs, notice how it's not in there yet because we're gonna have to move quick. You see that there's a bubble. What you want is the bubble in between the two lines, which it's gonna wiggle a lot right now because it's, you know, round and doesn't have anything holding it. But when you actually put it in the hubs and it's glued in, it's gonna be a lot easier to move. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do two joints at once, this joint and that joint, and then we're gonna level it out and hold it there for a few seconds so that way the glue can set up while it is level. Also make sure you are at least on a flat surface when you're doing this. Notice how everything is going to be glued to that side of the crack because there is some amount of difference in the concrete there. So everything's gonna be glued on that side of the crack. Now we are gonna do the middle portion first because I think we'll be able to manipulate the ends, but also this is the most important one to be level. So we want it to be completely level. The other ones, they're not gonna have very long posts. This is where the actual hydroponic tower is gonna to be out of. Once again, hub, hub, with primer, pipe, with primer, pipe, with primer. Now we're gonna to wanna to move quick when we do this. Glue, 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 glue. Stick in one end, which is a little easier said than done. Stick in another end. Well, looks like we're gonna have to just level this on one side. So as you can tell, it's already starting to set up. That's okay. All right, perfect. So now we've got a glue joint that has semi-dried glue. Hit it with primer again. Hit it with glue again. It's a little bit more messy, but it will dry and it will weld the way that you want it to. Go ahead and push that bad boy together and make sure we're level. Now cheat code, if you get into a tight spot while you still have a long pipe, you can stick it in here and you can actually bend stuff using the pipe. But we're fairly good right there, as you can see. Check out that level. See how that bubble is right in between the two? That means our pipe is gonna be straight up and down when it comes out of that fitting right there, which is the important part because we don't want it to be leaning like the Leaning Tower of Pisa when we actually finally make it. Once your glue has set up, we can go ahead and get to doing it on the other ones. But you can see these will be able to be manipulated a hair, which was what I was going for. Now, once again, we are leveling this one so that it is straight up. So go ahead and glue everything. Primer, glue. And go ahead and manipulate your way in there, just like that. And then level your side. Push your fittings together, make sure they don't push out because they're gonna want to. Believe me, that's pretty close to level. This pipe is very flexible, so that's part of the reason why I wanted to build it out of this stuff. Now let's go ahead and do the far side, exactly like we just did. And once again, we are going to level this one, sitting straight up. So primer. Slap some glue in the hubs, glue on the pipe. Ooh. All right, 
so we're in the danger zone of this getting glued in there so we're just going to go ahead pull it out well that's embarrassing As somebody who used to be a plumber i didn't think about that i thought it'd be a little bit more flexible one hour later two hours later three hours later can you move it along i'm all out of time cards that's okay because we have that bell remember this is a coupling that the pipe can slide into so we can essentially make this a three fitting combo if we need to in order to set this so that we will actually be able to get enough space to get it in there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead just lop this off right here and i'll use a tape measure to figure the rest out in a sec okay so we've got our bell like i said it can just slide over the end here but it's going to give us a whole lot more space to be able to move so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to cut a little bit off more off than i would need to and my problem solving skills and now it's not going to line up perfectly but you know what the water fill can be down here that's totally fine and that's not going to affect anything so what we're going to do essentially because this bell is very deep, we're going to slide it on to here, slide it all the way on, get it in here, and then push it that way, and it will be half makeup, essentially. And that will give us a clear run on everything. So what we're going to do is we're going to primer the crap out of all this. Because this thing's been glued and ripped apart three or four times now. So let's go ahead, like I said, primer the crap out of these two fittings because we can still save this. Although this is our last shot without having to run to the hardware store. Just for good measure, we're gonna primer both of these again and this coupling. We're then going to primer everything, or primer the pipe and then glue everything with tons of glue. So once again, primer, you can see that it's melting the glue and hopefully you don't run into this problem. Just do the last two together or something. Okay, let's do this. Now I'm gonna make sure I primer way down this bell. Primer this bad boy, primer this bad boy. Make sure the level nearby and we need to primer this end can't forget that okay lots of glue in every one of these hubs this is to be able to give me lots of spinning power okay now we're gluing the pipe just running around there running around there running around there and then move quickly. First, we are going to push this coupling on. And yes, my hand is straight up in the glue right now. Big ass egg shaped. There we go. Fuck yeah. Okay. Now we are going in. We are going back together. To glue I don't know if this does anything Whew. a little bit around here it gets messy doesn't look great but hey it's what we're dealing with it's together I feel like I'm about to pass out okay in case you wanted to know glue the last two 
pieces together at the same time. So start at one end and work your way down, but glue the middle and the end, the second end together at the same time. And you won't struggle like that. But if, uh, you know, you enjoyed me struggling, or at least you appreciate that I'm keeping it real and realize that, hey, things happen, and this was just a design in my head, so I didn't know if it would be perfect. If you appreciate that, hit the like button and subscribe. But anyway, we're gonna get on to the fun part, and that's actually making the holes for the net cups. For this portion, we need to determine how tall you want your tower to be. I cut this piece of pipe to five foot because it will be about as high as me because you have to accompany for the fact that there is some rise from that sanity in the middle. So I'm going to take this pipe and since we have cats, now we have to determine where we want our first holes. So we're gonna put the first holes on my hydroponic garden farther up than you necessarily need to. But since we have indoor cats, like I said, I don't want them to be able to get to the plants. Now for me, cats end to end, I feel like are going to be about two foot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a two foot measurement, which is right here. Like I said, I am going to paint this, so it's not that big of a deal that this mark isn't that clean. So then what I wanna do is I wanna put holes in this. We're gonna go every foot coming up. Now this is probably giving a little bit too much area to breathe and that's okay. Okay, so what I've marked out are the one foot marks. So I've got a foot, a foot, a foot. So now I'm gonna mark out six inches on each. Now this is the part where it's gonna get sketchy. So make sure you grab some gloves. If you don't have any already, Okay, now this part, we are going to determine what kind of nut cup you're gonna use. So I'm using a three-incher. I've got a two-inch pipe here. And as you can see, they line up almost perfectly. So I think if I jam this in there and wiggle it around a little bit, I'll hollow the hole out enough to be able to slide the nut cup the rest of the way in. If that doesn't work, I have a three-incher, which would be almost the perfect size. But I'm worried that the three-incher will push the plastic out too far. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut a nice little 45, make this almost into a spear. Now to do this, it's kind of sketchy. And there you have it. You can freehand it however you want. We just want a pokey end to be able to poke in to the other plastic. So now let's go to where you can set up your heat gun. And like I said, you need gloves for this part. What we're going to do is we're gonna take our, take our heat gun and I have no idea what temperature this needs to be at. It starts out at 650 degrees and it's quite warm. So what I'm going to do is take my glove We've got our poker spear ready, and I'm just going to heat up this portion of the PVC. We'll see how long it takes until it gets malleable. And once it does, what we're gonna do is we're gonna push a hole into it using this part of the spear. Interesting. Can you see that? Huh. You know what? I didn't know if this would work or not, but it appears like it's going to. And also, I'm doing this outside so that I don't have to worry about fumes because there are a lot of them. So I'm going to take this poker part and poke it in. It's not quite warm enough yet. So we're going to crank this baby up. 820. So what we're doing, you got to think, the water is going to be falling from this top part, so we want to come in at an angle so that our net cup sets at an angle. 
So that's what we're gonna do. Are we ready? So what I did there, is I poked a hole, now I've got my net cup set in there. Worth noting that that net cup is gonna go far enough in, as you can see, that it's going to almost go clear across the pipe. Well, it's not perfect, but it'll work. I'm gonna try to get the remaining ones more at an angle though, like this. Okay, you can see that it's starting to brown the PVC. I think I could probably poke a hole in it now. Let's find out. Yeah, maybe not with the neck cup, but with this. That's much more at the angle that I want. Yes, 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 yes. See that? Perfect. So now we're just gonna continue to do this process the rest of the way down the pipe to our two foot mark. I am gonna kinda just bounce back and forth. Honestly, I might not even use measurements anymore. I might just go here and here and just lather, rinse, repeat. Our heat gun allowed us in just a hair over three feet to do 10, 10 plants for this hydroponic tower. I think I'm gonna do mostly lettuces and strawberries in here because uh, strawberries will grow year round, you know? So now the fun part, we get to finish this bad boy off. Okay, so. Sorry if you can hear my heat gun in the background. It's still cooling down and it needs to cool all the way down before it will shut all the way off. But now we get to glue this bad boy in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and prime and then glue. Now keep in mind, we've got to decide which side you want the back to be. And then I'm going to determine the part that is most likely to be the back here is going to be right here. And I'm going to have the back be this way. So go ahead and put that in and spin it. And there we have it. So the back's gonna be facing this way. Try to hold it fairly level. As you can see, the cats are gonna have to get up this high in order to get to anything. So now I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the frame part. And what that means is I need to go ahead and glue my parts that are going to be a little bit higher up in the air. So let me go grab what I'm thinking here. Okay, so this is going to be my float. In order to determine how much water is in the system, see like when it drains down, it's going to fall down and then you'll know you need to fill it back up. This is just a styrofoam ball. This is just a rod that I found off Amazon. And if you would like to get yourself one, I will leave a link below in the description so that you can grab yourself one. So this right here is where my float's gonna go. And what I want is essentially a piece of pipe that will be high enough so that it'll be floating kind of like this up in the air. And then when the water level goes down, we know that it's getting down there by how it hits in the bottom there. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut two seven inch pieces because we need to make both the float and something to put your pump down inside and that's going to be your fill area too for the water. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We'll go back over here and I'll put in 
basically my fill area, show you how that's gonna work. So this fill area is really quite simple. We're just gonna take this and glue it on where you're planning on filling, which for me, it's going to be on the back side. This is also going to be the service area for your pump. So we're just gonna go ahead and glue this in here, straight up and down. So this for right now is where the pump is going to live. You can easily reach your hand down in there and to service the pump if you need to. But what's awesome is, like I said, it's just gonna go ahead and live right down in there. For this portion, because we're going to end up painting this, go ahead and put a cap on there. We'll end up drilling a hole in this eventually. And it's going to, like I said, get painted. And your water is actually going to come up through here and then run all the way up that way. So now let's go ahead and we're gonna make a way that we can do a float valve over here. So for what we're going to do on this portion, is we're gonna have a cap. We're gonna go ahead and drill three quarter inch hole into. Now why three quarter inch? Let me show you. We're going to do a three quarter inch because we are going to essentially put this coupling on the bottom part and put this up through or put this up, this male adapter up through the, the bottom part and it will fit into a three quarter inch hole. And we're gonna screw the male adapter into a coupling just like that with a little bit of silicone in there so that we won't have any leaks, but also the three quarter pipe or th the three quarter hole is going to be smaller so it will create a good seal so we're going to take a cap go ahead and just drill right down the center you need to be safe here something you can also do is run the drill in reverse like i'm doing here and it still will cut a hole clean through there we have it we have a hole now what we are going to do is we are going to take our silicone and what we're going to do with it is basically just run a bead and then we'll just stick this bad boy right up through here it's even tight enough we're gonna have to drill it out a little bit more now we've got our pipe up through here and we're gonna go ahead and take this coupling screw it down once again creating a watertight seal which really, in reality, isn't required to be watertight due to the fact that it is never gonna have water clear up this high. But I'm gonna go grab two pairs of channel locks to be able to finish this off. So let me show you how I plan for this idea to work. We're gonna go ahead and glue this piece in, our, another, our other seven inch piece. So just go ahead and do this. Little primer. Little glue. Go ahead, glue her down in there. I apologize, I had you guys set up so that you couldn't see it. So essentially, I just glued this piece in. And my thought is on how this is going to operate. We've got our little guide here. This will float with water as it goes up and down. Just slide this right over the top. And then in theory, once it gets to a certain level, once it gets almost to where it disappears, we know that it is time to fill the, the hydroponic garden. We'll just have to figure out exactly where it's gonna be. So it should never actually reach, entirely reach the bottom. So I'm gonna go cut an inch and a half piece of my PVC. There we have it, we have a little sleeve now. So now as the water level drains down, this will slowly Go down, go down, go down. Once we get close to where it is about to go under completely, we know that we need to fill this bad boy up because when it's sitting flat, it is flat with the PVC. It's essentially how a gas tank gauge works. So there we have it guys, the hard part's done. Next time around, all we're gonna do is run some water lines, hook the pump up, and test our gauge. 
I ended up having to take this out because some of the primer that's in there was melting it. But hey guys, I appreciate you guys for sticking around with me. And if you have any questions, let me know down below. I'll leave an equipment list even for what I've used down below in the description. And if you got value out of this, like and subscribe. Otherwise, see you in a couple weeks when we finish this project out. Thanks so much for watching.